in the last video we have talked about vectors the definition of vectors and types of vectors addition and subtraction of vectors in this video we are going to discuss the product of vectors while ending of the first video i told that the product of vectors is not like algebraic product then how it is different we are going to learn in this video how the product of vectors is different from algebraic product you can basically classify the product of vectors into three one is multiplication of vectors by a scalar second the dot product third cross product the dot product is also known as scalar product and the cross product is also known as vector product when two vectors are being multiplied sometimes we may get the scalar other times we may get the vector that depends on the two vectors which are being multiplied or when we take the product of two vectors it turns out to be a scalar then that product is called dot product and if two vectors after multiplying and the product of two vectors is again a vector then we call it as cross product let's first talk about the multiplication of vector by a scalar number so here if you take a vector a b if, if it is multiplied by 2 twice of it if it is a b it is twice of it similarly suppose if you take three lengths that means you are multiplying by 3 then you will get 3 a b if a is equal to 2 i plus 3j minus 5k then twice a can be written as 2 times 2i plus 3j minus 5k this 2 is to multiply all the coefficients of i j and k so 2 2s are 4 2 3s are 6 and then 2 into minus 5 it's minus 10 so i wrote 4i plus 6j minus 10k as the answer similarly if you multiply the vector a by 3 each and every coefficient will be tripled so 6i plus 9j minus 15k so if you multiply a vector by any number only the scaling will be changed it may be increased or it may be decreased now here i have taken this blue vector as one unit vector then this is representing the twice of the length of this vector that's why it is 2a that means here the this vector initial vector was multiplied by 2 suppose if i take the multiplication factor as minus 2 then it will be in the opposite direction so this is minus 2a so like that we can represent the vectors by multiplying any scalar number now let's go through another example if two vectors are given a is equal to 3i plus 4j plus 5k and b is equal to 2i plus 3j plus 4k then 5 times a that means each and every coefficient will be multiplied by 5 and 3 times b means it is 6i 9j because it is 3 3 into 3 9 it's 4 therefore it is 12 now as we have learnt how to operate the addition and subtraction suppose if you want to add these two i to i correspondingly we have to add just like algebraic addition and the subtraction is same as algebraic subtraction magnitude or the size of the vector is represented by its length if we draw a vector with larger length then its magnitude is more so here i have represented one unit vector and the length of the vector is two units then i have to make exactly twice of that similarly we can have three units then the question arises how to find the modulus of a vector here again we have taken the graph so this coordinates is 1 and 1 that means it is indicating i plus j and this is 
here on x axis it is 1 2 3 and then 4 and y axis it is 2 so it can be written as 4i plus 2j to calculate the modulus of this oa it is the hypotenuse in this case so if it is 1 this coordinate is 1 and y coordinate is also 1 then obviously the hypotenuse according to Pythagoras theorem is square root of 1 square plus 1 square. Here we have taken two dimensional plane. Had we taken the three dimensional plane, it would have been square root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square. Then this A should have been in the space which is equidistant from all the three axes. This B is 4 units away from x axis and 2 units away from y axis. Therefore, the magnitude is square root of 4 square plus 2 square. Now, how to write the formula? How to generalize it? So, if a bar is equal to a i plus b j plus c k, just now we discussed it is a units away from x axis, b units away from y axis and c units away from g axis. Now, the modulus of a can be written as square root of a square plus b square plus c square. Now, let us talk about the dot product. We know that dot product is also known as scalar product or it is linear product. How did we define the dot product? When the product of two vectors gives a scalar, then it is called as dot product or linear product of two vectors. Now, why do we call it as linear product? Because the definition of this dot product says, it is the product of two vectors. Suppose if they are on the same line, then we will have to multiply directly the modulus of one vector, the modulus of the other vector. But if the two vectors are making an angle, then we have to take the second vector's projection along the first vector. Therefore, here also we are multiplying two vectors which are on the same line. One is the original vector A. Suppose if you call the first vector as A, then second vector is the projection of the second vector. So, again we are taking only the linear product of it. Now, we can give examples for dot product. In physics, work done is the dot product of force and displacement. Average power is the dot product of force and velocity. The electrical flux is the dot product of electric field intensity and area vector. And several other examples can be given and the representation w is integral over f dot ds, p is equal to integral over f dot dv and the phi the electric flux is equal to integral over e dot ds. Now let us further discuss the, the dot product. So here I have taken two vectors on the same line. So here theta is equal to 0. Now, when we take the product of these two, it would be the maximum. Why it is maximum? Let us see, of course. Now, when I took the two vectors with certain angle, and here this theta is less than 90, which is an acute angle. And here, I took theta is equal to 90. So, here, if I want to take the projection of the blue vector on red vector, it is 0. But here, it is not 0. Here, this we are considering as positive direction. Therefore, the projection is also is coming along the positive direction. Therefore, the product would be positive. The projection of blue vector is 0. Therefore, the dot product is 0. Now, what happens if theta is more than 90? That is for an obtuse angle. Here, if you take the projection of the blue vector, it comes on the negative side of it. So, therefore, the product, the dot product will be negative. So, in this case, the arrow mark of red vector is in this direction, arrow mark of blue vector is in this direction and then the angle is 180 degrees. But here, as we said that it is linear product, but linear product with two vectors which are in opposite direction, therefore, here it is negative again. The dot product is minimum when theta is equal to 180. So, here the dot product is positive when theta is less than 90 for acute angles 
and the third product is negative when theta is greater than 90. So here we are taking only the products, linear products of the vectors. If the two vectors are on the same line, then it is directly we take the product of their moduli. But if one vector is making certain angle with the other vector, then you have to take the other vector projection onto the first vector. This is why we call it as linear product of two vectors is nothing but dot product. Now, how to get the projection? So, here these are the two vectors a bar and b bar are having some angle theta. Now, this is b bar and then I want to show what is the projection of that b on a. So, if you draw one perpendicular, it comes here. The projection of this vector is shown as in white color. So, this is this vector is projection of B onto A. Here I took two vectors, one is BA, the other one is BC, and the angle is theta. Now, what I have to do if I want to get the dot product, I have to take the projection of any one vector on the other vector. So, here I took because it is convenient for me to take the projection of BA on BC. So, I have drawn one line and then BD is the projection of BA vector. Now, from the figure, it is very clear the cos theta is equal to the base by hypotenuse BD by BA. Therefore, BD is equal to BA times cos theta. Therefore, the product is BC then BA that is one vector first vector second vector and the cos angle between those two. So, this projection of BA along BC can be represented as BA cos theta. Now that we got the formula for the dot product. If we wanted to calculate the dot product of two vectors A dot B if A is one vector B is another vector then we have to take the modulus of A, the modulus of B and the cos angle between the two vectors. Here we consider theta as the angle therefore A dot B is equal to AB cos theta is the formula for dot product. Now what happens the dot product of two unit vectors. So here we know the formula right now A dot B is equal to AB cos theta. Here moduli of unit vectors are 1 and 1 only. If you take the modulus of i cap that is also 1, j cap that is also 1 and modulus of k cap is also equal to 1. Now, if you take same unit vectors i dot i then this 1 into 1 and then cos 0 because the angle between i and i is 0. So, i dot i can be written as 1. Similarly, j dot j that is 1, 1 and then cos 0 k dot k is also equal to 1. Now, what happens when the when we take the dot product of i dot j? So, there also it is 1 and this is 1 but theta is 90 degrees because the angle we have to take between the i cap and j cap. We know that i cap is along x axis and j cap is along y axis. Therefore, if you take the dot product of two different vectors, two different unit vectors, it is always 0. That is i dot j, j dot k, k dot a or the reverse of it is always 0. Now, we know that a dot b is equal to a b cos theta. Now, I can conveniently write as these are numbers only, I have just rearranged the a and b. I shifted b to front and a to the next and then I got b times a cos theta. That means I have taken the vector b and then projection of a on b. In the previous case, we have already seen that when we wanted to take the projection, then we have to take that vector and cos theta. So that's it is it appears as if it is a cos theta means it is the projection of a onto b. So we begin with a dot b and it is concluded that it is also equal to b dot a. Therefore, we can conclude that the dot product 2 is commutative.
let us see how to compute the dot product of a and b so as we discussed this i dot i is only one i dot j is zero i dot k is zero similarly j dot i is zero j dot j is one similarly k dot k is only one therefore we have to take i to i j to j and k to k so the dot product will be 3 into 2 6 and i dot i is 1 therefore i did not write that one 4 into minus 3 5 into 4 and we can simply get the answer for dot product in simple number now how do we find if two vectors are given how do we find the angle between the two vectors for that the formula is there a dot b is equal to a modulus of a modulus of b cos theta that means you must calculate a dot b and then modulus of a and then modulus of b then you have to divide it so cos theta is equal to a dot b by modulus of a into modulus of b now for that i have taken first a dot b we know that a dot b means i to i j to j and then k to k in that way it has come 38 now modulus of a we know the formula for modulus of a it, the coefficients are to be squared and added so 3 square 4 square 5 square which gives us root 50 similarly modulus of b 2 square 3 square 4 square which gives us this is 4 this is 9 13 and then this is 16 29 so now we have to replace in the values cos theta is equal to a dot b by a b that means 38 divided by root 50 times root 29 so finally theta is equal to cos inverse of this value if it is a known value like half then you can say that theta is equal to 60 suppose if it comes out to be 0 then we can say that the two vectors are perpendicular to each other suppose if you get this value is 1 then we can say that they are parallel vectors or collinear vectors because theta is equal to 0 so in that way we can find out the angle between the two vectors so that is all about the dot product in this video we have talked about dot product in the next video i'll be taking the concept of cross product and uh, we will discuss the differences between cross product why we have to take the cross product what is the necessity of taking two different kinds of products we have already introduced dot product is a scalar product which is linear uh, product then what happens to the cross product how it would be what is the result of that cross product all those things will be discussed in the next video hope that it is clear for you and do not forget to subscribe the channel